Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thank you very much for tuning in, finding my channel among the incredible amount of content on YouTube. Thanks for joining me as I explore the amazing, incredible wide world of pens. And yes, you see in front of you a nice, interesting box with some ornate description here. That's Picasso. And that is some kind of like <clears throat> even more bizarre view of one of his paintings. And there's some more information on the pen. A lot of information on the pen. Even more information on the pen. So you may ask, Chris, why do you have this pen? And that is a very, very good question. I would say this is probably one of the pens that contributed to my decision to buy no new pens in 2023, which I did violate yesterday. But I only spent $3, a little bit over $3 for two pens from Timu because I saw a listing in Facebook, went and looked at the pens, here they are, and decided before they sell out, I wanted to get two of them, and the price was incredible, so how could I say no? But this is the pen we're talking about now. Let's say put the box the right side up. So let's open up this box, look at the pen, talk about why I bought it and decided to do this video about six months after I bought it. So after you take off the cardboard sleeve, you see something that looks very similar to the cardboard sleeve. They really do use that logo quite a bit. And you certainly do have that stylized Picasso. Maybe that's his signature. It's a magnetic closure box. It opens up and we see inside a nice pamphlet, a warranty card, a really impressive presentation. And that's probably what kind of motivated me to buy this pen because this box is just amazing. Pen's in your usual cellophane sleeve. And here we have the pen and you know I'm into stealthy pens and this is certainly a stealthy pen. I like the dark chrome trim pop off cap and we'll see a dark nib more dark chrome pieces so that's the pen it's a slim black pen and I have one pretty much similar to this one which we'll look at shortly and here's a nice booklet again most upscale pens Pelican is one that comes to mind comes with a booklet there's both English and Chinese in this booklet and it talks a lot about pens, taking care of them, how to write properly with your pen. It's always good to know. Cleaning your pen and more things on pens, maintenance and warranty. And I also think it's interesting that they have the Eiffel Tower. And there's some more descriptions on the pen company. So we're going to look at this pen a little bit more. Maybe do a writing. I don't know. One reason why this pen has been a challenge is yesterday I received three pens, three really nice looking pens, which I'm looking forward to reviewing. And I also received a very, very nice snake pen stand, which will be an upcoming review. So it's distracting my energy and focus is to these new things I just got. But I felt I needed to review this pen and show it to you. So here's the ink that's going in the Picasso. I don't currently have a pen inked up with this ink. It's an ink I do enjoy quite a bit. So it's going to go into the 916. So the best trait of this pen is the nib. It writes great. It wrote first time. Of course, I'd cleaned it, taken it apart, etc., etc., but I do that with everything. It feels nice on the paper. You get a little bit of feedback, but it's good feedback. It makes you 
know you're writing on paper and what kind of paper you're writing on. Nice consistent flow. Has a little bit of shading here in this ink, which is not really known for it, but it can produce some interesting characteristics. So here I've disassembled the Picasso 916. And you may ask, why do I do this? Because fountain pens will require maintenance at some point in time in their life. And I think it's important to understand how the pen can be disassembled. So this one is disassembled to be able to thoroughly clean, nib, feed. The converter unscrews, can be taken apart. As I mentioned, I like that nice metal ring with the silicone insert. Just a standard injection molded feed that we see on almost every pen and a nice black number five nib. Yes, the pen does come apart. The other thing I like to do is see how the cap is put together. So we're going to bring in our trusty LED light, shine it into the cap, and we'll see a, a nice plastic cap liner in there. It's good to see, and there's a little screw, looks to be stainless steel, at the top that holds in the top finial and the clip. Nice design. Yes, you may say, Chris, didn't I say you'd review this pen a little bit ago? And I'll go, yep, here it is. It's the 916, just like this is a 916. The 916 seems to be a very popular model that Picasso made. Comes in many, many colors. Here's some examples. You can find it on any of the websites. It seems to be all over the place. It's relatively inexpensive. I paid a little bit more for it because of the box it was in. And we'll see that little logo there below the clip. Very common. So here we have a matte black finish. Here we have that black chrome finish. And they are consistently in repeating that theme throughout the pen. I mean, they're very well-made pens. They certainly are in the upscale category of the Chinese pen models. And I think they promote that. And they also give you a nice gift box, which I think might be popular in many places around the world that gift fountain pens regularly. Wasky Squirrel kind of liked his. I'll put a link to his review in my description. So that's the pen. If we look at the one I just got, Pull it open, the section unscrews. Lots of turns, which is always good. We'll see a, a branded converter, but it's your classic converter. Nothing spectacular about it. But I do like that metal reinforcement ring at the end and that silicone insert. So you're going to have a nice fit at the top of that nib unit. So one of the things that the Picasso does well is they have that signature here on this section. And they also have unique stampings on their nibs. Like I said, well-made pen. They certainly are into branding and promoting their theme. So here are some size comparisons. Your Pilot Metropolitan, <clears throat> your Lamy All-Star. The dimensions on the 916 are very close to the Metropolitan. So here they are posted and the length is again very similar to the Metropolitan. Lamy Safari is in it's a league of its own. The section is more traditional on the 916. The Metropolitan has a big step up between uh, the section and the barrel. Uh, you know, pretty good flare out there at the bottom. It actually looks to be a little bit more diameter. And obviously you have a small nib on all these three pens. This will go a little closer. Here we are a little closer, just to give you an idea. I'm certain that you may have at least written with a Metropolitan or a Lamy Safari, so you can compare it to the 916 as far as how that section might feel in your hand. Well, I'm starting a new notebook for my writing samples. It's the same Fabriano paper that I've used in all my other writing examples. I like to stay consistent on paper, and I don't want to use what everybody else uses, so I use Fabriano. So we're going to talk a little bit about this pen, maybe the cause for me, like I said, to not buy anything in 2023 because I didn't need this pen. I'm not a real fan of packaging, even though I do find it interesting and it is part of the hobby and it does, in probably many markets, influence the purchase of a pen, but 
not for me. Pop off cap. It posts nice and deep and secure. It fits really nicely in the hand, both posted and unposted, but it definitely feels better. Posted, it adds a little bit of weight to the pen. That section's about as thin as I can deal with. In fact, it's a little bit thinner than I can deal with, but the way the weight and the balance is, I could write with this for a decent amount of time. Do I recommend the pen? Nah. Doesn't do anything for me, nothing special, but you might love it. You might love the combination of colors and the fact that this comes in many, many colors. So it kind of lends itself into that. I want everything in that model in every color and blah, blah, blah. And they probably do changes seasonally or yearly or whatever to encourage their continual sale. But that's not really what motivates me. So let's see how that nib works and we'll do a conclusion and... So we've come to the conclusion of this video. I want to thank all of you for watching. I hope this video finds everyone safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying pens, finding new pens, discovering pens in your collection you didn't know you had, and writing some letters or doodling or sketching, whatever it is, as long as it involves your pen. We've reached the end of this video. And we will say bye-bye. Until next time, a lot of videos to come.